picking the New International Version because I would like to draw out something here, truth. Okay, are you there? Here we go. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. God, God bless the reading of this word. This is where I draw the title of our sermon this morning. Uh, I'm inviting us, let's, you know, uh, bow our prayer, okay? About how the power of prayer and how can, you know, the same power, the power of prayer, can change impossibilities into possible things. That even those, uh, you know, simple desires that we have in our hearts, when we bring them into an attitude of prayer, we would be surprised and shocked that actually God is serious about, you know, unto our uh, petitions and to Him that God doesn't play around. That when we come to Him and present before His presence, Anything, I, I like to say the word anything. anything. If you get onto your Bible, these are what more of the favorite words that God uh, does have in the scripture. Whatsoever, anything, and all. That whatsoever, anything, or all we speak up to Him when we request, when we request off to Him, God answers our prayer. He doesn't say no. Okay, here we go. The Bible gives us the general, general rule on prayer. That God answers every single one of our petitions to God. Amen. That's why He says in, in the scripture, in the Bible, generally. So about this morning, allow me to present to us two of these what we consider as the most effective or most powerful forms of prayer. That when we offer this unto the Lord, God does really, uh, God does really say no. He doesn't say no. When we, we come to Him and offer this form of prayer unto Him. Now I lay the foundation, this is the general rule. When we pray to God, He really answers. Amen. But, you know, the truth of the matter is this. If I would ask you, there are how many prayers you have that are still unanswered today? That has been already for not just months but years. Somehow between your prayer and the answer, there seems to have a missing, missing link. And the message this morning can be the answer of those missing link. Somehow there can be some ingredients that uh, you are not, you and I are perhaps not yet understanding. And as we will listen to this word, perhaps these are the missing link. These are the missing ingredients, probably. According to the Word of God, there are, these are these two exceptional forms of prayer that are really very effective and powerful. That is, when we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. By the way, you've been serving the Lord for a while. How do you pray? Please do not in the name of whoever saints. When we pray in the name of Mary, it's an idolatry. That's why prayers in the name of Mary cannot really be answered. Amen. Amen. When we pray to whoever like Saint John or Saint Michael, or whose, whose saints are those? You don't pray in Burley's name. Jesus said, when we pray in His name to the Father, every prayer we do are answered by God. He's answered by God. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the name of Jesus is our key. The name of Jesus is our access. Amen. We only have one set of keys to the church. Now for this for this week, the keys or those keys are being held by, by Dawn. Uh, second floor is being renovated. We may have neighbors already come uh, the month of January down, downstairs, second floor. So uh, literally, uh, Don comes here every day and he goes home together with the keys. I don't hold the keys. That's why when you practice whatever, uh, you, you go and check out the pastor days at the Dales. Can we have the keys in the church? Or oh, we, we don't have the keys in the church. For this, I mean this last week and maybe for this week, two weeks because of reno renovation, Don has it. 
The Macedon, how simple he is, eh? he walks in his way and climbs here and has all of those bunches. He knows all of those single keys where to, uh, where to plug them, where to open them. And when he stands and, you know, plug all of those keys, I mean, the entrance here, just one, one, one twist and he opens, you know, the door and he gets in here at the church. That's how prayer is. The name of Jesus is our key that uh, opens up, you know, the floodgates of heaven, opens up, you know, the doors of God. And we can have all of the limitless graces and goodness of God into our lives. Are you still there? Amen. Amen. So that's it. Very simple. And number one, this is the subject which I'm about to deliver to us. I'm, I'm beginning to explain the kind of prayer so far that I saw in the Word of God is the prayer, the form of prayer of the destitute. The Lord promised in 102 verse 17 very clearly, very expressly, and very emphatically. God says, He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. Respond here has supposed to you an, an earlier word. It is drastic. Can we say the word, the word drastic? Yes. What is drastic? Quickly. Quickly are not for months. There are how many prayers we pray eh, are taking for months. There are how many prayers you have that are still unanswered today. As I mentioned a while ago, this can be your key. The words, the Lord, the Lord says, the prayer of the destitute are drastically responded by the Lord. You want your prayers to be responded by God quickly. Amen. Amen. You must have this form of prayer. The prayer of a destitute. And then the second paragraph, it says, God shall never despise their pleas. Please, another word for prayer. Please, or your request, your petitions unto God. God will never despise. You know what is despise? Reject. Say the word, never. Never. I'm supposed to call uh, Sister Ems this morning to give a testimony. We just reserved them, Ems, on our Thanksgiving. Ems had so a lot of ailments in her body. And uh, she's been coming to the church asking me, please you pray, Pastor. She has gold stones and kidney stones and she still has, you know, a lot of uh, other ailments in her physical body. That One time in our prayer, you remember Ems? She was telling me, Pastor, why me of all the people why me i'm just a simple lady pastor all i want is to be happy in life and then we deal her in, in uh inner healing and deliverance she she was uh enra unraveling all of her pains in her life and she's telling somehow telling me pastor i i somehow like don't deserve this god is really very good we pray for her for her gold stone for her kidney stone and she's telling me pastor I need to prepare this much for my coming surgery for my according to my doctor this uh, this is my procedure and see Ems is only you know an ordinary a simple worker to this to this company though she has salary but not that much you know when doctors her doctors uh, did tell her you prepare 60,000 80,000 you will have you will have this uh, surgery you will have this uh, procedure. She come into me telling me, Pastor, I don't know where to go. Talking about debts and owes. I don't know, Pastor, how much are my owes and how much are my debts. In her destitute moments, in her destitute moments, she came to God and asked God, please help me, Lord. Please heal me. Well, the Lord is healing and delivering uh, M's one at a time. Last two weeks ago, she was very happy, overjoyed, telling me, Pastor, uh, a bit from my doctor, and uh, they were they were surprised. I'm also surprised. I'm supposed to have kidney stones in my kidneys, but my kidney stones are gone. But she still has a gold stone. M's, do not stop to pray as in a manner of a destitute person. Because the way how the Lord healed your kidney stones, He also can heal your gold stones. I like, I like to read once again. 
Psalm 102 verse 17, the Bible says, He will respond or drastically respond to the prayer of the destitute and He will never despise their pleas. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, what is meant by the word destitute? Huh? Don't, don't get, uh, get it confused with other words similar to uh, the sound, you know, because uh, destitute is a different word. I mean, destitute is this distinct word. Simply, destitute is meaning being poor, being helpless. Hello? Can you, can you read the meaning of that? Say, being poor, being, poor. being helpless. Being helpless. Uh, you can hear you well. Say louder. The counts of three. One, two, three. Being poor, being, being helpless. helpless. Now, destitute here is more than just physically. Because I know so many poor people, but their prayers are still not answered. I've seen so many helpless people, but their prayer still remains unanswered. I mean, uh, what, what the Lord perhaps is meaning here when He says, this is you. Is that literal or is it constructive? Because on the other hand, I see many people, for example, they have the money, but they still are coming to God in destitute. And when they pray, God hear their prayers. I, I see men and women in the Bible, they have all of the means, they have all of them. Some of them are even kings. They, they were not literal, literal, helpless people. But you know, they come to God in a way as... They come, in, they come in to Him in prayer in a destitute way. And in spite that they are kings or they have, they have all of the means... But they're coming to Him in a destitute way. God, God the Lord answered them. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, being destitute here is not literal. Look at you. You don't look poor. You don't look helpless. Many of you are even intelligent. Many of you are even, what is this, uh, brilliant. Thank God for all of His blessings. Amen. Amen. Being poor and destitute here is an attitude. This is almost similar to humility and brokenness. This is not, uh, this is not actual but constructive. Are, are you still there? Amen. Yeah. I like us to say the word poor or helpless. Poor or helpless. I will bring you to Psalm 51 verse 17. That explains everything. The Lord says. The sacrifice of God are a one, two, three. Read. Broken spirit. broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. The Lord says, Oh God, you will not despise. I just remember these two guys coming to the temple and praying, and Jesus was actually either watching or relating this as a story. The first was a Pharisee. With all of his uh, religious garbs. Kasi may mga, ano yung mga Pharisees no, sa time of Jesus Christ, meron talaga silang sinusunod na form sa kanilang damit. Yung uh, protocols, the way they enter uh, the temple, kailangan maghuga sila sa kamay, kailangan ganito ganyan. Kahit na sa prayers po nila, may sinusunod, sinusunod talaga sila. Sabi nga po, ang ano daw, ang Pharisees was the, the Pharisee was the strictest sect of Judaism. Yun ang sinusunod po nila. Ayun, itong pariseyo, habang siya rin na nanalangin, nakataas daw kanyang, ano, kanyang ulo. Pati ang kanyang kamay. Sabi niya, Panginoon, ako po'y nananalangin, ito ko yung pananangin ko. Ganito, ganyan. Marami siyang request. Gaya po natin. Dati po natin mga request. Amen? You are, not, you are not human if you don't have request. What makes you human is you being limited. That's why we request. We pray to God. Amen? Amen. Pero ito yung problema ni Pharisee. Kasi instead, he will come in humility, in brokenness, 
in a, in a contriteness of heart. No. He came instead to the Lord bragging around of who he was. Sabi niya, Panginoon, kailangan dinggit mo yung panalangin ko. Alam mo, dalawang beses ako nagpupuwasa kada linggo. Lumingon siya sa kanyang, ano, sa kanyang likuran. Panginoon, hindi ako kagaya nung nasa likod. Ano yun siya? Yung uh, tax collector yun siya. He is a sinner. Lord, I'm reminding you. Grabe naman. <laughs> yun siya sinner. Pero ako, Lord, hindi ako pumapatay ng tao. Hindi ako nagsisunungaling. Hindi ako, uh, hindi ako naglilibat sa aking kapwa. Ako, Lord, righteous ako. You gotta answer my prayer. At hindi lang ako nagpa-fasting dalawang beses. So, Lord, kahit lahat, kahit anong matatanggap kong blessing galing sa'yo, binibigay ko talaga ang lahat ng ikapu sa'yo. Diba? Nalalaman po natin sa Matthew 23, uh, Anis and Cumin, ito po'y uh, form of, uh, what is this, uh, ingredients or uh, spices pala. Form of spices that are really very minute and small. Sabi po ng Bible na mga Pharisees daw, kahit yung pinakamaliit na spices daw, kinukuha pa nilang mga ikapu, binibigay talaga sila sa Panginoon. Now, sabi ni Yesu Cristo sa kanyang, sa kanyang story, are you still there? Yeah. He walked his head and he said, surely the prayer of that man is not answered. Hello? Yeah. Now, let's check ourselves. How do we pray? Pag mag-praise and worship tayo, Panginoon, masaya-masaya talaga ako kasi, Lord, hindi ako pangingong gunung ako sister doon mo. Lord, masaya-masaya talaga ako, Lord, kasi lahat inibigay ko talaga sa'yo. Hindi paliho nung brother. Huwag natin yun gawin kasi hindi yun destitute prayer. Hindi yun contriteness. Hindi yun brokenness. Amen. Amen. In fact, we do not have any power or right whatsoever to point our finger to judge anyone else. It is something between you and the Lord. Tama yung sinasabi po nila, we are to mind our own lives. Amen. Amen. Palakpakan doon natin si Lord. Pangalawa, dalawa lang na pala silang tao doon sa temple, ano po? Yung pangalawang tao, nandun daw sa likuran, at hindi daw siya makataas maka malang sa kanyang ulo, kasi hiyang-hiya siya sa kanyang sarili. There was humility. And he also lifted his hands to God, and his, he was closing his eyes, but before he could start his words, he was beginning to fall his tears already. And then he said, Lord, I am not worthy to even ask you. I don't deserve to even request not a single one from you because I am a sinner. The Bible said he was beating his chest, signifying his unworthiness. But he said, be merciful on me. Have mercy on me, Lord God. Please help me. And he, he said his prayer. Two of them finished. The Lord commended the, the, lat, uh, the latter, but he said to the former, his prayer was not answered. The former went home, still his heart was not peaceful. Pag wala kasi tayong peace sa puso po natin, if we pretend to be peaceful, it's hypocrisy. Amen? Kasi ang total peace po ay nasa kay Cristo Jesus. Amen? Pero yung tao, yung pangalawa, yung ano, tax collector, the Bible said, sabi ni Jesus Cristo, his prayer was answered. Kasi his prayer was, was destitute. He was coming to God poor and helpless. His attitude, there was brokenness, there was contriveness in his heart. And then the Bible said, he went home justified. Say the word justified. justified. So there was peace in his heart. So let me present to us what we like our prayers to be drastically answered. When we want our prayers to be not denied or despised by the Lord, let us come to Him. Let us pray to Him in a, in a form of being a destitute. Let us come to Him poor in the Spirit. Let us come to Him help with, an, with, with an attitude of a helpless person. Let us come to Him with brokenness. Let us come to Him with a contrite heart. Amen. Amen.
Sabihin mo yung katabi mo, the prayer of the destitute. The I would like to give us three examples from the Bible. Let us see here how these people really pray. There was this woman I so loved, Master Roger also loved, and maybe Oji also loved, that they called their daughters Hannah. Okay, basahin ko doon natin sa, ayun, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse uh, verse 8. <laughs> From the English Standard Bible, no? Sabi po dito, he raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them He has set the world. Pag may attitude tayo ganito, yung destitute attitude, ito yung ginagawa ni Lord sa atin. He raises us from being poor, from the dust. He lifts us from being needy and from the ash heap. He makes us seat with the princes and inherit the seat of honor. The Lord will honor us though. For the pillars of the earth as are the Lord's. Ito, ito yung kakayahan ng Panginoon. Ang lahat kasi ay nasa sa Diyos. Amen? Kung gustuhin ng Panginoon, yun ang mangyayari talaga. And on them he has set the world, the Lord is in control of everything. Who was Hannah? Who was Hannah, by the way? We're talking here about the Old Testament. Si Hannah, meron siya ang lahat. Lahat sa buhay. Kung baga, siya po'y mayaman. Eh, yung kanyang asawa po si Elkanah. Siya po ang isa sa mga pinaka-respectful man in their community. Meron po halos lahat si Hannah sa kanyang buhay. Pero meron siyang kulang. Hinahanap Hannah po niya. Wala pong anak si Hannah. Meron siyang magandang husband. Meron, meron silang ano, uh, wealthy family at saka wealthy life. He only has this one thing. Na he's been, she has been longing in, in her life. She never had a child. Hello, amen. As I said, we are in the Old Testament. Sa Old Testament kasi pwede may, merong magkaroon ng dalawang asawa. Yung unang asawa, ang dami talagang mga anak na every year daw, according to the Bible, they would climb up to Israel, I mean, Jerusalem, and offer the burnt offering. Yung unang asawa daw would shine against kay Hannah. Eh, ikaw, forsaken ikaw. Meron kasing, meron kasing meet noon sa Old Testament. Pag walang anak ang isang babae, ang... Ang isip po nila noon, ang iniisip po nila, yung babae yun, tinalikuran ng Diyos. Ang tawag noon, an outcast. Hello? So palaging sinasabi ng unang asawang babae sa kanya, kay Hana, oh, tinakwil ka ng Diyos, outcast ka ng Diyos, kaya hindi ka nagkakaanak. So year by year, instead na masay maging masaya siya, na mag-worship, she was destitute and she was discouraged. Kaya na isang araw, siya pumunta doon sa, ano, sa inside the tabernacle. It was in the temple yet kasi at the time of Samuel, uh, or at, the, at their time, at this dispensation, the holy place of God was yet the tabernacle. It wasn't yet the temple. She went inside into the holy place, prostrated herself before the Lord. Maybe kneeled down or... What is this? Bow before the Lord, spread all of her arms. And the Bible said, crying. May tao pa ho dyan? Amen. Pag tayo po'y magpipray, tsaka umiiyak tayo, ang ganda po ng feeling. Pero pag hindi gani tayo makaiyak, huwag, huwag, ano, huwag pinitin. Amen? Amen. Hindi yun nagadala sa iyak. Ang, ang, ang punto po dito is yung contriteness of our hearts. The brokenness of our hearts. Yung humility po natin, yung being destitute ba natin sa Panginoon, siya po'y umiiyak. Sabi po ng Biblia, habang siya nananalangin, may ano daw, uh, hindi pala, yung the mouth of Hannah was moving. But there were no words coming out from his mouth. She was praying fervently, mouths were mo her mouth was moving, but no words are coming out. And you know what? She was being misunderstood by the high priest. 
You know the price of being misunderstood there? How many times we are being misunderstood by people? Hello? Amen. But that's just all right when God understands you. Amen. Sabi pa ng, ano, ng high priest, Uy, babae ka, umuwi ka. Alas 9 pa ng, ano, ng umaga, siguro lasing na lasing ka na. Kasi uh, we are in the Old Testament when they celebrate ano, uh, festivities in Israel. I mean, uh, alcohol was part of it. I mean, wine was part of it. Alas 9 pa ng umaga, lasing na lasing ka, babaeng ano ha? Uh, babae ka, tapos uniinom ka, ano ka ba? And you are inside the temple. I mean, you are inside the tabernacle. Come on! You are, you are such an embarrassment. Ayun na naman. And Hannah lifted up her eyes. Sabi niya kay Eli, the high priest, I am not, I am not uh, drunk. I even did not drink wine, but Sir, please understand, I am a woman of bitterness. I'm a woman forsaken and an outcast. I'm coming to God in prayer of contriteness. Ibig sabihin, I am destitute. That's why you see me falling my tears, my mouth moving, but no words are coming, coming out from my mouth. But I am praying sincerely to God. Alam ko ninyo, ano palang pinapanalangin niya, hindi po pera. Marami na kasi siyang pera. Hindi po para dumami ang kanilang animals, kasi marami na silang animals. She was only praying for one single petition. Sabi niya, Lord, that I can have a child. Kahit isa lang. Pagbibigyan mo ako kahit isa man lang na anak, isa sa uli po yun sa'yo at magsiserve sa'yo. And this boy, one year later, was Samuel. When he was at the age of six, she was delivered by the mother back. And Samuel became a priest in the, in the sanctuary. By the way, si Hannah, nung umuwi siya, sinabihan siya ng priest, the Lord grants the, the prayer of your heart. Imagine na, for how many years, hindi nagkaanak yung babae, pero nung panahong yun, yung nag-destitute siya, kung, ano, uh, he, she came unto the Lord and he, she, she asked God in a manner of a destitute, destitute uh, char character. The Lord right away answered her prayer. Amen? Palakpakan yeah. natin si Lord. Ayun, si Samuel, six years old, bumalik dun sa, ano, sa temple. Nakalimutan na ni Eli anong nangyari. Siya ang nag-remind sa, ano, sa high priest. This was the child, the answer of my prayer. At this time, si Hannah was never sorrowful. Si Hannah had all of the smiles in her face. She was very glad and she felt very fulfilled. Pag meron tal pala tayo ibibigay sa Panginoon, binabalik pala talaga yun ng Panginoon and God will even increase them and even will multiply them. Now, when she got home, she became pregnant and the Lord added six more children to this woman. Destitute. Palapakan po natin si Lord. Now, how many prayers I have for me, for my family, for my future, and for all of you? We have a sister who, who texted me last Thursday, Pastor, please pray for my brother who's in Dango. He's sick. Can you pray for me? I mean, can you pray for him? I prayed for him being your pastor. Last night, uh, my, my niece and nephew who were here last Sunday starting to attend church. Uncle, uh, our daughter is sick. I said, I will offer a prayer for her. I pray for her. Lahat po tayo nananalangin sa Panginoon. Amen? And this morning, God would like to teach us the key, paano po yung prayer natin na ma-receive talaga natin? Na hindi na tayo maghintay ng iilang taon. Brothers and sisters, dapat pala pag mag-prayer po tayo, we must do it in brokenness and contriteness of heart. Wala, hindi po natin, uh, ito, let's not mix them with pride and arrogance. Amen? Amen. Okay. Pangalawa po, si Jehoshaphat, he was a king. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, being poor and helpless is not literal. It's not actual, but constructive. It speaks about the manner of our hearts. 
It is the attitude of our hearts. Sige daw, ganun na natin yung puso na, ang kamay natin sa puso natin. Sabi natin, is the attitude of the heart. Sige, laksan po natin one more time. It's the attitude of the heart. Diba, sabi ni, sabi ni, sabi ni Jesus, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Pag ma-manifest yun. Sabi po sa, for Samuel, Si Lord, hindi na ako nai-impress ano yung nasa paglabas. Kasi tinitingnan ni Lord ay ano yung nasa loob. Amen. Si Jehoshaphat, isang araw, can you help me read together? Okay, I will help by counting uh, one, two, three, and then let's simultaneously read them. Here we go. One, two, three. Amen. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and pro proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah as symbol to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Another way na ma-show pala natin sa Panginoon na we are destitute is to the extent of when we pray and fast. Fasting. Fasting kasi is humility. It's a physical way of stripping your... No, your uh, depriving your ano your uh, your carnal carnal desires. Sabi po dito si Jehoshaphat daw siya ay natakot nung nakita niya ang mga enemies. Uh, this is one of the only rare verses in the Bible where we can find that actually daw yung human fear is another in another another form of blessings in another guys. Hello, ano kwan niyo? Blessing in this guys. Pag natatakot kasi tayo, hindi natin anong gagawin, nagpipray tayo. At saka yung prayer po natin, sincere, serious. It's not just only a tapping something prayer. Hello, amen? amen? Sabi niya sa entire kingdom, let's fast and pray. Let's, let's ask God to help us. Otherwise, our kingdom will be destroyed and all of us will die. Our daughters will be raped. Our uh, our wives will be uh, will be killed, and all of us will die. This kingdom will uh, will be destroyed. Let us come to God. Let's pray and fast. And good because the people listened to Jehoshaphat. They prayed and they fasted. We 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 can find this story in Second Chronicles chapter twenty. I would like to give you an assignment. Maybe later when you go home. Read the entire chapter of Jehosh, uh, the entire chapter of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 because this is a real beautiful story of how God can rescue His people. Amen? Amen. Ang mga kaaway ni Joseph at tatlo silang kingdom, they were fighting against each other. And uh, when Jehoshaphat arrived to the place where they were supposed to battle, they were supposed to engage, he arrived there just to uh, uh, to strip all of the, the enemies, all of their gold, all of their silver. They went there for, uh, for the price of the battle. So they went home, you know, carrying all of the golds and all of the silvers of their enemy overnight they become rich and they become wealthy in such an exceptional way they came into battle and they uh, they came into battle and they became winners they become uh, they became winners and they became victors not because they fought not because they they lifted their swords or they shoot their arrows they became enemies because the lord helped them that's how well, a prayer of contriteness and brokenness is being answered by God. The Lord will help you without your efforts. Amen? Amen. I'd like us to go to another example. This is the third. Another man we can find here by the name of Hezekiah. His problem was when he was sick. The Lord told him, you are going to die. How, how, how would you feel it? How would you respond when a prophet, a prophet of God? Now in this wise, it was prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah, with the usual typical picture of a prophet, was coming to him with a cane, tungkod. Sabi ng prophet, you fixed your family. 
Tell your wife. Assign your children. Warn your children. And set your kingdom. Prepare your kingdom because you are dying. You're gonna die anytime soon. Hello, amen. See Brother Jess and Sister Sheila. Shane, basta December ka ng kaliga, Shane. Pirmi ko ta ako da el grace by the Lord na the whole family. Kaya nga December, pagpasok sa December, mukhang bibig ni Tito Pastor, boys, to your papa is happy birthday. Entire December. And Brother Jess knows what I mean. 11 years kasi, di ba? Mag 11 years na siya, no? 2004 yun, di ba? Si Brother Jess, isa yan sa pinakamagaling na lineman sa Zamponga City. Yung si Brother Jess, ganyan lang yan. Zamsel ko, even now, acknowledges yung brother na yun, isa sa pinakamagaling na troubleshooter sa sa Zamsel ko. Isang araw yun, di ba, Brother Jess? May isang ano, uh, trouble dito sa downtown. Ang pinapadala, yung ano nila, shift nila. Na-disgrasya yun si Brother Jess. Galing po sa poste, uh, I think that's 30 feet, Sheng. Sheng, how, how tall ba is? Yeah. And sino, mga alto-alto man, si Brother Jess climbed there. Hindi pala nila alam na yung kable, kung saan ito troubleshoot nila, may kuryente pala yun. If I remember right, the volts running through through that line was 13,800 volts. Ayan, nasa ano natin, sa household natin, sa bahay po natin, ang kuryente dyan is, ano lang yan, 220 volts. Please do not try or make some experiment to, ah, uh, what is this, ah, uh, Poke your fingers sa tawon ito sa sa socket because you will you will get a shock, di ba? Ayon kay Brother Jess, thirteen thousand eight hundred volts. Paghawak po niya. Sabi po ng teacher po namin, professor namin sa legal medicine. I understand how are the nerves, the arteries and capillaries are. The nerves kaya are the bigger things. The arteries are the smaller, smaller veins. The capillaries are the smallest veins in our body. Yung ano daw, yung... Tawag nito, yung... Ano yung una? Arteries? Hindi. Yung veins, o. Yung veins natin. Yung mga veins, yung malalaking ano natin. Gaya nito, jugular. These are the connection of yung blood po natin galing sa puso po natin palabas. Ayun, puso natin patungo sa baba. At saka yung ano doon natin, yung arteries. Ano yun? Yeah, yung arteries po natin gaya ng pulse. This is to where our blood from our... From our lower body is being pumped at dinadala doon sa ano sa brain. Kaya na, uh, mapifeel mo, gaya, gaya na ano natin pulso, may ano, may contraction. And then the capillaries, the smaller veins. Siguro yung tatlong klaseng Vienna ni Brother Jess, ruptured, there were some of them. Ilan po nasa kanyang brain? It felt like a rock from top of the, ano, uh, the post. Si Sheila, no, after learning it, she, she, She really dismayed. I mean, that faint gala yung sister po natin. Kasi mother, di ba? Ang mga bata, si Nicole, look at the kids, the boys. Nicole at si Colleen, at si Nicole at Colleen, how the kids have grown and to be good looking. You were still very small at the time, 11 years ago. Di ba, Sheng? Yun ang time na yun, destitute moment natin, Sheng, di ba? Lahat ng mga kapatid ni Sheila, They are eight. They are your age, Shane. Palangga kasi nila si Sheila. Si Sheila is the youngest. Umiiyak yung mga kapatid. Pagdating ko dun, sabi ko, mananalangin tayo. 
Kahit na yung mga Catholic sisters at brother ni Sheila, nung nag-pray kami, they were at their sincere, umiiyak sila. Kasi si Brother Jess nandun sa, ano, sa surgery, sa iba ng doktor, labas-pasok, ay ma'am, hindi talaga kami magbibigay ng assurance sa inyo. The most that we can tell you, the brother is only, or has a slim chance to survive 10%. Slim chances. Destitute na destitute kami. Nag-pray kami po. I was 11 years ago. It was a history. God is really very good. Amen? Amen. Palagpakan po natin si Lord. <laughs> Nangyari po yung December 23, two days po before the birthday of Brother Jess. Talagang lumampas si Brother Jess at nagkaroon siya ng more birthdays. Hanggang ngayon po, the brother is a living miracle. Pero kung nag-pray siguro tayo at in a destitute way, sinasabi natin, Lord, alam mo, magaling kasi kami. Lord, marami kami pera. Panginoon, tulungan mo kami. Bigyan mo kami ng pinakamagaling ng doktor. Kasi ano, Lord, kaya na yung bayaran. Siguro it could have been different. Amen? Si Hezekiah, nagkasakit siya. Sinabihan siya, mamamatay siya. Nakalimutan niya na siya po'y hari. Sabi po dito sa Bible, Basahin po natin 2 Kings 20 verse 2 to 3. He turned his face. Kalimutan mo niya na siya, siya po'y hari. He turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord saying, Now Lord, please remember me how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept. Spending your life to 15 more years. Wow. Amen? Amen. Prayer of a destitute. Amen? Amen. Palagpaka na natin si Lord. Okay, I, I would like us to see here. This is one of the extremes we can find in the Bible. You know what? God even relents from His anger to the humility of a person. Pag ang Diyos daw, galit na galit sa isang tao, tumatahan ang Diyos sa kanyang galit. Pag yung taong yun na kinagalitan ng Panginoon, siya po'y naghambol. Now, I like us always to remember this. Every time we lift ourselves up, we are in a dangerous place. Hello, amen? amen. Bawat panahon ganit na tayo po'y naghahambol, We obeys ourselves, we humble ourselves, we are This is in Jonah. Chapter 3, verses 5 and 10, uh, 5, 5 and 7. Are you still there? Amen? I'm almost done. <laughs> si Jonah, alam niyo yung nangyari ni Jonah, di ba nag-disobey siya kay God? Kasi gusto talaga niya ang kingdom of Assyria to, uh, to be destroyed. God told him kasi na, you go and preach. You tell the people that God is angry at you. He said, oh, I, I wanted to default. Because sabi niya, if I will not go, they cannot hear the word. So that meaning, the judgment will happen to them. But God, diba, you remember the story? God healed Gali Jonah. And it was, he, she, he was eaten by a big fish. They said, it, it was now a blue whale. Hello, amen. <laughs> so pumunta siya sa Assyria. And he told the people, God will gonna destroy this great city 
after 40 days, this city will be destroyed, fire will fall from heaven, and all of you obstinate people, you hard-headed, stupid people, God will gonna kill you. God will gonna judge you because of your sin. Now, you mga tao, sabi ko dito, basahin na lang natin. One, two, three. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and removed his robe and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast her, herd, nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water. Make no story short, they made a prayer and fasting. Starting the king, his family, at saka kanyang lahat ng mga tao. Now, this is very, this is quite, ano, exaggerated. A slight exaggeration. Kaya sabi ng king, kahit yung mga animals niyo, yung mga puppies, yung mga pusa, at all animals, huwag pakainin. Lahat po tayo, in three days, three nights, magpa-fasting tayo. They were afraid of the coming judgment. You know what happened? Ito lang nasuya ngayon si, ano, si Jonah. He really was mad to God. Sabi niya, Panginoon, ito lang sinasabi ko nga eh. Hindi na nga ako pumunta dito, pinapunta mo pa ako, tingnan mo yung mga tao, nagre-repent. Kasi alam na alam ng propeta, ano yung weakness, ano yung kiliti ng puso ng Diyos. Pag ang tao pala, kahit gaano ka makasalanan, pag yun siya po ay maghahambol sa Panginoon, the Lord gali hears the prayer of the destitute. Amen. So hindi po natuloy ang judgment <laughs> ng Panginoon sa Assyria. Sapagat yung mga tao po, they humble themselves before the Lord. Amen? Amen. I are you still with me? Amen? Amen? Now, I would like to close with relating to you this one. Brothers and sisters, you know when these parade times happen, it calls for di di disparate measures. Amen? Amen. Pag Disparate kasi tayo, wala na tayong other way out. Gumagawa tayo ng mga bagay na na-unusual. If we want God to move His hand unusually, we ought to do something unusual as well to the Lord. Yung pinapakita natin sa Panginoon na tayo po ay seryoso, tayo po ay uh, sincere po sa hinihiling po natin. Now, there are these two more things let me explain as I am closing. You know what? Pag mayroon tayong denial sa buhay po natin, God is just pushing us to be to become desperate. Di ba? Pag makikita po natin na iba po binibless ng Panginoon pero ikaw, makikita po natin yung ibang mga tao, kanilang mga panalangin, they are hurt, they are hurt by God but your prayers are not. It's a denial. Say the word denial. denial. When we feel like we are being denied, it pushes us to be desperate. And you know what? This is the this is the best. This is the last. When we are desperate, God is able to turn our need to become an opportunity. Amen. Was it Hannah? Was it Jehoshaphat or either Hannah, Jehoshaphat or Hezekiah? They were being denied. But the needs of those folks were turned by God to be their opportunities. Amen? Amen. Now I would like to ask you, what are certain denials that you have this time? God doesn't hate you. God instead would like to turn that need to become your opportunity. Amen? So starting today, you come to God. Let's come to the Lord in a destitute manner, in a character of being contrived and broken before Him. You received the word of God this morning? Yeah. Let, us, let us all stand. Let's come to the Lord.